The International Energy Agency releasing its World Energy Investment Report this morning, and the pandemic has taken its toll on the sector. Brian Sullivan is here. He's got more on the details of that report. Brian, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see as well, Becky. Yeah, I mean, the, the report is in and the numbers, I mean, I, I'll call them brutal. I think that's not being an overstatement, especially for future investments. OK, there's a lot to this IEA report, so we'll try to whittle it down to what matters to the CNBC audience. Number one, and here's the headline, investments in energy, all kinds of energy could have their biggest year over year drop ever on record, at least according to the IEA's tracking of this, falling as much as 20 percent globally this year. Remember, investment in energy, we're talking about drilling for oil rigs, new power production, renewables, etc., was expected to rise, now expected to fall 20%. Now, the main source of that pain is what else? Not hard to figure out. And that is new investments in oil and gas. The IEA is saying investments there could fall nearly $250 billion globally this year. But that energy investment decline is not just oil and gas. It also includes energy use and efficiency, down as much as $33 billion in expected lost investments as well. A lot of that includes renewables. Now, there are a number of reasons for this expected drop. Number one, of course, crashing oil prices globally. You don't build new wells or new rigs when we have oil prices that are 20 bucks a barrel or even negative. Number two, electricity demand around the world has fallen. We're all staying home. We don't need to light up that big office building in Tokyo or take the subway and access to credit, particularly in emerging markets. That is the funding source, guys, of so many of these new projects. And the IA warns that as things tighten up in Europe, the European banks have had a tough go, access to credit could shorten up as well. So two other quick key points from that IEA. Number one, renewables, if you're looking at it, wind looks pretty good relative to solar. Solar, they expect to kind of go like oil and gas and fall as well. And also that we're seeing the kind of quicker reopening in China may be helping mitigate some of that pain as well. But all in all, guys, a pretty bleak picture for energy investment in 2020, according to the IEA. Hey, Brian, uh, do you think that old axiom holds in this scenario where uh, the, the cure for low oil prices is low oil prices? Because when investment goes down, then you don't have as much uh, pumping that's going to be coming out of the ground at a later point, And that, in turn, brings prices higher. Does that hold true this time or is there something different? No, I think it is held true. I mean, it's like our, our mutual friend, the late great Boone Pickens said, you know, he's I remember one time he said, I've lived through eight oil busts. The only thing I know in life is that there will be a ninth. I mean, we saw that, right? It's like as soon as oil prices <laughs> fell to where they were, they dropped even more. Production fell a lot more than even some of the most bullish expectations had, Becky. By some accounts, we're down one and a half to maybe two million barrels a day. And rig counts, those, those big things that go drill the new oil rigs, they're at the lowest recorded level ever down over 600 but, year over year. So that's investment and that's jobs. But does that lead to the next oil boom in, in prices as, 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 as all this investment drops? And then are you going to turn around and see a, a, big, a big spike? I mean, are we forever trapped in this sort of cyclical world with oil prices? You know, I'm going to channel my inner boon. I'm not sure of anything. I don't want to use the word forever because with oil and gas, who knows? But I will say this. I think you guys on Squawk have had some guests on that have said we could have $100 oil within a year if we see demand continuing to rise and supply continuing to fall. I haven't heard that viewpoint from very many people, but I think higher prices are likely on the horizon, assuming, assuming we don't get some major second wave and a re-lockdown of everything as, as supply starts to then come back up. It's going to be all trying to find that sweet spot, guys, in timing between demand and supply coming up synchronously together as opposed to like what we had, which was supply was soaring in that price war and demand was crashing. And that's why we had negative 40 bucks, of course, that one now world famous day. So I think it's all about the timing, Becky, of the recovery. If you look at driving data, we are starting to driving a little bit more. Milan, Italy, it's about 50% off its lows. Now, it's still not on its highs. But the rest of the world is beginning to reopen up as well. We'll just have to see how that goes and hope that we don't have that sort of crushing second lockdown, if you will.